Hello everyone, so today's video I'm going to be talking about something that I really should have spoken about more than I have done in the past and something that we all need to be talking about more and I'm opening up the conversation because this is really serious and I don't want to remain silent because silence is violence when it comes to racism. This is such a difficult thing to talk about but we need to be uncomfortable and we need to talk about it because it is so interlinked into everything we do, all of our lives, and it is killing people, it's killing black people, and we can't just stand by and keep letting that happen. I'm sure lots of you have been seeing loads of information on social media, and it's incredible the amount of education and information that we're all being exposed to that we weren't before now, and if you want to see any more information, then please don't listen to me, because I don't know anywhere near enough, Go to the, uh, the description box and I will leave loads of links to incredible people who um, I think that you should follow uh, and lots of resources and information about racism, about Black Lives Matter, about black history in the UK um, and also donation links. I will be donating all of the money from this video to charity and the organisations linked in the description. Um, in fact, I think on YouTube you can set a video as a fundraiser, so if I'm able to do that, then I will do. Yeah, and I really encourage you to all follow those people, read the information, listen to podcasts, um, read books. I'm currently reading how to, um, sorry, I'm currently reading why I'm no longer talking to white people about race. Um, by Rennie Edo Lodge and it's extremely eye-opening. Um, so yeah, check out the information in the description box before you even watch this video because honestly that is far more important information than what I have to say to you right now. My voice is, you know, I don't want to take up space but I also understand that as a white person I need to be speaking up right now and I want to speak up as a white person in the vegan world and in the sustainable world and in the environmentalist world uh, online because I can't continue to just be complicit and not acknowledge this. If you feel uncomfortable, that's normal. If you are worried about making mistakes, please make mistakes so that you can learn and you can do better because if we don't, things won't change and people will continue dying. Black people will continue dying because of police brutality, because of racism. People will continue to experience microaggressions because of racism and the UK is not exempt from this. I know lots of people think this is a US problem. We have a serious race problem in the UK. So I was watching an interview with George the Poet on the BBC yesterday and he shared some facts that I wanted to share with you to my UK followers specifically, 40% of the poorest households in this country are black, whereas only 4% of the country are black. Black and brown people account for half of all young people in jail right now. In a period in which the population of young offenders has fallen by over two thirds over the past 13 years with the proportion of black young offenders doubling in that same period, whereas their white counterparts have seen a roughly 70% fall in their numbers in youth offender institutes. And finally, black people are twice as likely to die in police custody as their white counterparts in this country. So I've been listening and learning over the last few days and I came across a girl called Tiana Empowers and she made two incredible videos on sustainability and how it is elitist. And watching these videos, I gained so much knowledge and I wanted to share some clips from those videos because I think what she said was very important to hear. So she was talking about the sustainability movements and how we leave out a chunk of the conversation. So let's look at that clip. Hello everyone. So today's video is going to be about sustainability and how a lot of times it, no one in their sustainability videos really talk about how people who are low income or poor or people in urban neighborhoods in general can adapt these things without it being completely out of touch and it just sounds like a white culture thing to do rather than making this something that indigenous people have been doing and using their stories first and pivoting it to something through the narrative of like black people and how we even despite how some of us are low income and poor how we have 
had sustainable practices but instead it just turns into this like elite sounding thing like when you get a little bit more money then this is what you do when in reality I think the sustainability conversation needs to be happening with people who look like this from certain communities that I'm similarly from and have us lead those conversations or at least use our narrative so it doesn't seem like oh the people who are doing sustainability stuff are like these white people who are like vegan and like you know have more disposable income and like or they talk at people who are not being sustainable when in reality that group is gonna look like a group that does not look like them I hope I'm making sense so first first things first grocery stores many black people especially low-income black people live in food deserts so if you live in a food desert that means that there are not a lot of grocery stores in your neighborhood so that means like you just you don't have access to fresh produce you don't have access to just you know a wealth of food in general is clearly a racism thing that when you are working with sustainability because sustainability is a good practice and wants to make sure we have a healthy earth by making sure us as humans have better practices if you want to fight for sustainability you got to talk about race first and if you're going to be a sustainable person especially a sustainable white person you need to be an advocate for racial justice and food um, food equity and communities all over the country okay so one of my biggest critiques about sustainability on YouTube was of course that it, it was it is not inclusive but another thing is it promotes individualism a lot a lot of the youtubers on this platform say you know vote with your dollar you have the control you make the change basically our individual better consumption can help the world overall and that's simply not true because a lot of us don't even have the dollars to vote and a lot of times again marginalized groups cannot make the cannot live and produce ethically no matter how much they try if there is no ethical consumption under capitalism they make under a certain amount of money and if they're being marginalized by society I will put in a blog that I read about it all I'm gonna say is Google is your friend now watch me listen to me read this paper actually on a marginalized community a lot of people forget about when talking about sustainability in the United States of America, 2.2 million people are incarcerated in public and private facilities and over 700 are released yearly back to their home communities. Almost half are rearrested within a year. These problems have been excluded from mainstream sustainability narratives despite their serious implications for sustainability. This paper addresses how the criminal justice, prison industrial complex, and foster care systems negatively impact these communities and families. To comprehend the system's links, a sustainability lens is used to examine and address interlinking, interlinking system impacts obstructing achievement of sustainability and the necessary community carriers, characteristics for building sustainability movements. Communities characterized by environmental degradation, economic despair and social dysfunction are trapped in unsustainability. This will be linked in the description if you want to read more. Next thing I want to say is talk about is white responsibility. So white people do have a responsibility to make sure black and indigenous people of color are being included in conversations and they, that they are helping uplift our voices and stories. It's not like their sole responsibility to do that, but it is their responsibility to do that wisely. And what I learned from her videos is that if we're going to be talking about environmentalism, if we're going to be talking about sustainability, if we're going to be talking about veganism, we need to also be talking about racism because those conversations can't exist without the other. And her point on individualism is important for me to take on board as somebody who talks about individual action a lot. What is next? What, what comes after that? And the thing is, the vegan community, the sustainability community, the environmentalist community, um, the community of people who talk about the same things that I talk about online and make videos about this are very whitewashed and that's a problem because you think about sustainability, whose ideas are they? They aren't my ideas, they're ideas that have come from communities of people who have been living sustainably for centuries, from black indigenous people of colour who have been reusing, have been living sustainably and actually caring about the planet, whereas White supremacy and capitalism has been doing the exact opposite. So we can't come on here as white people and say, hey, take a reusable cup and don't eat meat when we have built systems like capitalism 
which undermine being sustainable in the first place. Which leads me on to a post that Leah Thomas, Greendale Leah on Instagram, shared which said environmentalists for Black Lives Matter. And she was highlighting the importance of intersectionality within environmentalism. So I'm just gonna share the post on the screen now so you can have a read. So moving forward, I'm going to be educating myself on racism, systemic racism in the UK, um, intersectionality within veganism, within environmentalism. These are topics that I have been learning about for a while, but I feel like I haven't brought it to the forefront enough, enough and I need to be doing better. I saw a post from Waste Free Marie and she's awesome. Please go and follow her and check out her Instagram account because she did a post on how to ally and I wanted to highlight it here but I also want you to go over to her Instagram to read what she has to say but I'm going to share the first two do's and don'ts on the screen for you so you can read. And I really hope that beyond this week we do the work, we don't make this a performative thing, we just posted a black image on Blackout Tuesday and then that's it, that's all the work done. We need to continue educating ourselves, making sure the communities that we live in, with our friends and family, the workplace, that we are being uh, anti-racist and that we are being intersectional with our activism and we aren't forgetting the voices of the people who are being oppressed and we actually stop this from happening in the future because it's all linked, it's all interlinked and we can't just pretend like it's not. I really encourage you to look at all the links in the description, follow all these amazing people, listen to them, learn from them. Please do not go into their direct messages asking for them to educate you because the education is there, the information is out there, you can find it on your own. Also, I would love for you in the comments to write some of your favorite black creators and people who you follow and who you think everyone else would love to because that would be amazing and also correct me if I've said anything ignorant or wrong. I hope we can have this conversation more and I just want to say to all of my black followers that I support you, I see you, I hear you and I'm really going to try and do better as a white person and I'm not going to make that performative, I'm going to sincerely continue to strive to do better in the future and yeah, I'll see you in my next video.